everyone, welcome back to Liz Sews. So today, by request of Sean at Kittish Behavior, we have a sew along tutorial for the Boylston bra by Orange Lingerie. So the Boylston bra is what I have here on my dress form. I think one of the most unique things about this bra is the strap extension. I think it looks really, really nice to have the straps match the fabric on the front of the bra. And I think this would be a great pattern if you ever wanted to turn it into uh, like a bikini top or something like that. Um, it would take very little modification. So I've made the Boylston bra up here in a cotton fabric, but it certainly would work with any sort of staple fabric like duoplex or anything like that. If you wanted to use a stretchier fabric such as scuba or, or uh, jersey, I would definitely recommend lining it in a non-stretch lining such as Trico um, just to make sure that you have the support that you need for the cuff. So to get started with this pattern, you're going to need to measure, take a couple of measurements. So to find out your band size, you're going to want to take a tape measure and measure around just underneath your bust. You want to make sure that the tape measure is sort of parallel to the floor. And once you get that number, if it's a half of an inch, you would round down. Otherwise, if it's more than half an inch, you would round up. So if you have an even number, so say 32, you're going to add four to that number. So if my measurement was 32, I would be making a 36 band. Now if you have an odd number, say your measurement was 33, then you would add five to that measurement. So if my measurement was 33, I would be making a 38 inch or a 38 band. The next measurements you need to take are to determine your cup size. So the first one for this pattern is going to be your over bust measurement. So for your over bust measurement, you want to take your tape measure again, sort of parallel to the floor in the back, up underneath the armpit, and then over top of any tissue you may have on in the chest region. And you want to take that number and write it down. Then the next number you want to get is your full bust measurement. So this is the one that people should be fairly familiar with. You want to go across the widest portion of your bust and get that measurement as well. And then the difference between your over bust and your full bust is going to determine your cup size. So if the difference is one inch, your cup would be an A. If the difference is two inches, it would be a B. Three inches would be a C, so forth. So once you have your band number and your cup number, you can go ahead and look those up on your PDF pattern. The way this pattern is organized, you probably only need to print two or three pages at most. I will say that the strap extensions for this portion of the bra right here are the same regardless of what cup size or band size you are. It's only included in the pattern once at the very beginning. So you're going to want to print out the, the, the pages that have the strap extensions and then the two or three pages that correspond to your size bra. So here are all the pieces that we'll need for the Boylston bra. This is a three piece cup. So you have your upper cup piece there and then your inner and outer lower cup piece. We have our bridge as well as our two side cradles. We have the back band and then we have the strap extension here. I've cut all of the front of the bra out in both of my fashion fabric as well as a stable sheer lining. Now the first time that I made this bra here, um, I actually goofed a little and I made two of the same lower cut pieces. So you'll notice that this line crosses over at a little bit different point than this one does. Um, and just to, to keep things clear in this tutorial, I've went ahead and used a fabric where it's very clear um, which is my right and which is my wrong side. When I cut the this one out, I, I did lay out all my pieces just like this and I made sure that I had mirror images. But then for some reason when I went to go sew it, I couldn't tell which was the front and which was the back of the fabric. And so I made a little goof. So just, just a way to show you that even after having made 50, 60 bras, I still 
makes silly little mistakes like that. So once you get all of your pieces cut out, you're also going to need a couple of other notions to make the bra. So the first thing I have is strap elastic. So the pattern calls for a yard of it, but I actually find with these strap extensions, I don't need anywhere close to a yard. I'd probably use closer to 20 inches or so. My strap elastic is a 3 8 of an inch. And so I will also need the corresponding rings and sliders that go with that. So these are 3 8 of an inch uh, rings and sliders that will correspond with your strap elastic. If your strap elastic is a half an inch or 5 8 of an inch, then you want to get the same size ring and slider. You're going to need some underwire channeling. I think a yard is what I have here, though if you are a larger cup size, you might need a little bit more. I have the underarm pico elastic. You'll need a yard and a half of this, as well as the bottom of the band pico elastic. So the elastic that goes along the bottom of the band is going to be slightly wider than the underarm pico elastic. So you need one and a half of this, and one and a half yards of that. You're going to need a hook and eye. Uh, I think for my size pattern, it, it's made for a two hook and eye, but I just prefer having three. So I, um, when I cut out my back band piece, I just made this section a little bit taller. I didn't scoop it out just as much on the top. That way it could accommodate a three hook and eye. And then lastly, you're going to need the wires that fit your pattern. Any sort of like classic or day style shape should work fairly well for this. To get started, we just need to set up our machine. I like to use sort of any polyester thread. Uh, just because the seams undergo a lot of tension in bras, I wouldn't recommend a natural fiber like cotton or silk. So definitely use a polyester thread when making bras. I also have a Microtex needle set up in my machine. Um, you really want to use a needle that corresponds to the fabric you're working with. So if you're sewing a bra out of something like um, duoplex or even jersey or scuba, it might make more sense to use a ballpoint needle. But uh, mine is just made out of cotton, so I'm going to go with a Microtex. I also have my walking foot set up on my machine. This helps to make sure that all those pieces just stay together really easily. Almost all of these seam allowances are going to be a quarter of an inch. So you want to make sure that you are able to easily identify a quarter of an inch on your machine. If you can't, I would recommend just marking something temporarily on the faceplate, maybe putting down a piece of scotch tape and marking where a quarter of an inch is. That way you are sure to get your um, precise seam allowance in. So I'm just going to put this thread in the machine and we can start sewing. So my first step, I always like to start by putting together the cup pieces. So we have the inner and outer cup as well as the inner and outer cup cut in the sheer lining as well. I always like to make these with all of my seams hidden. So I'm going to take my outer cup which is sort of the larger of the two triangles. I'm going to line up the lining and the exterior piece. You want to make sure that your notches are lined up as well. And once you have that, I'm going to put the fashion fabric on top of the fashion fabric. Again, lining up our notches. And pin that into place. Then I'm going to flip this over to the other side. This should be the side that has the lining fabric on it. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to pin my outer lining here and then make sure I'm matching up those notches as well. I'm just going to take this to the machine and do a straight stitch at a quarter of an inch along this notched seam. We're also going to repeat this for the other bottom cup. So here is what it looks like once it has been sewn together. 
So we're just going to open it up by opening the lining portion out as well as the fashion fabric portion. If you've done it correctly, you should have sort of a cup-like shape and you can see that those seams are fully encased. Now, because the lining fabric is made out of a high nylon content, I wouldn't necessarily recommend uh, ironing this at all. Instead, what we're going to do is do a line of stitching so, sort of like a scant eighth of an inch away from our original seam. And that's just going to tack all of that down and keep it really secure and flat. I've already done that second line of stitching on the other cut piece and you can see what it looks like here. From the inside you can see I'm just holding down all of that seam allowance inside and making something that looks really um, succinct. So for attaching the top of the cup, again I'm going to deviate from the pattern maker's instructions just a little bit. And the reason being I like to have enclosed seams all the way around both where it attaches and then along the top. So I'm going to use a method that's sort of like the, it's, it's similar to like a burrito method if you've ever made like a yoke on a shirt. That's what I, I like to think of it as. So the first step to doing this is we're going to attach the cup along the upper curve. So when you're looking at your piece, you should have a smaller triangle and then a larger triangle. You want to have the section of the top cut piece that doesn't have the scoop. So the shorter section over here is going to go along with the smaller triangle. You should have a, a notch marked in this and that notch is going to align with the seam of our cups here. So the first part I'm going to do is just pinning this fashion fabric to fashion fabric. Once I have the fashion fabric pinned on, I turn it around to the other side and I pin on the lining. So here it is all pinned together. You just sort of want to ease it along that curve to make it as smooth as possible. You want to repeat that for the second cup as well. Now what we're going to do is sew a straight line of stitching a quarter of an inch away from this edge. So once you have it sewn, it should look something like this. So normally this is when you would probably flip this out and top stitch. However, um, I want to get a nice clean edge. So I'm going to do what I think of as sort of the burrito method. So we have the upper cup lighting piece laying down like that. Then I'm going to take these, these two lower cups. Sort of roll them up to get them out of the way. Then we're going to attach the fashion fabric to the lining of the upper cup right sides together. But before we do that, we also want to make sure that we sandwich our strap extension in there as well. So we have, you have your inner cup all rolled up and actually it, it does help me at least. I found the last time I made this, if I just, pin that burrito together so it doesn't fall apart. So we get our strap extension. The first thing I did was to fold it in half along the center and I'll just press it so that we have a strap extension that looks like this. So the strap extension is going to extend off of the top of the cup at that triangle angle that meets right there. And you want it so that the raw edge of the strap extension faces the short side and that the folded finished edge is along the long side. 
so just like we did with the inner cut piece, we're going to roll this up as well. And stick it in. So we're going to line it along the edge of that cup. Then we're going to take the outside and sandwich it the strap extension in between your fashion fabric and your lining. I'm just going to pin this in place. Now you're going to continue pinning those two upper cut pieces together. So you have the wrong side of the fabric facing out and then everything else is rolled up inside. So now we're just going to take, again, a line of stitching that goes and stretches across this at a quarter of an inch in using a straight stitch. You don't want to stitch after the section that angles away. You just want to stitch up until that point. So here's what it's going to look like once you've finished doing that seam. You should have it open on both ends of this tube and it's a little bit easier to see this side because of the lining is so sheer we have everything just rolled up inside it so now we kind of just need to birth it um so first step is probably going to get be getting that pin out that i put in earlier if you think you don't need that pin i it might be easier for you to, to just not deal with that step and keep it rolled up. Um, <clears throat> I just wanted to make sure I didn't catch it inside anything. So in order to birth it, we just kind of need to push everything to the outside. And now we have our finished cup. So you should have two triangles right there, that's your lower cup, and then your upper cup, and then the strap extension that comes off of it. The last step that we need to do is just do another line of top stitching. I'm going to do it along this curve at an eighth of an inch, and if you want, you could also do it along that top line as well if you want it to lay a little bit flatter. However, I'm just going to leave it like that because I sort of like the way that clean edge looks. So here's how it looks after I've top stitched that curve. You should have sort of a three dimensional cup shape by now. So we wanna repeat those steps again with your other cup piece. So rolling it like a burrito and then stitching straight along that top edge and then pulling it back out. So by now you should have two cup pieces that look like this with the strap attack strap extensions added onto them and they should sort of be mirror images of each other hopefully um, and that's going to be it for today well that concludes day one of the bra sew along i hope you guys have kept up and come back tomorrow where we will start putting together the bridge and cradle